like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 10, that deal with the millennial kingdom, the thousand-year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth following the tribulation period. So let's read the first three verses of Revelation 20 today, and then we will look at those verses in the time that we have together. I want you to understand we, as we read these verses and as we look ahead to the millennial kingdom, that what we find in verses 1 through 3 is a prophecy involving Satan. So with that in mind, let's read Revelation chapter 20 and verses 1 through 3. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So as we come into these verses, in verses 1 and 2, we find a heavenly intervention. Here there is a strong angel that descends from heaven, and the Bible says, notice in verse 2, that he laid hold on the dragon. That phrase means to have power over or to be one's master. As we look at this verse, we see that this angel is empowered by heaven or empowered by the God of heaven to be the devil's master. And he grabs Satan and binds him with a strong chain that will remain on him for 1,000 years. And uh, this just reminds us that, yes, Satan is powerful, but the truth of the matter is that all God, our God is all-powerful. As 1 John 4, I believe it's verse 4, says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Friends, you and of yourself are no match for the devil. If you try to stand in your own power and your own ability, he will defeat you. He will discourage you. He will get you off course. Stand in the power of God. Surrender yourself to God. And when Satan comes, make sure that you are surrendered to God. Allow God to be at work in your life and take the word of God and quote the word of God. Read the word of God because Satan cannot stand the word of God. And uh, we see here that he's bound for a thousand years. And there's no disputing who the Bible is talking about in these verses. Notice what it says. It calls him the dragon. That old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan. So it makes it very clear here. Um, there are three, or there are four terms used: the the devil, uh, the old serpent, Satan, and the dragon to describe for us who Satan is. You know, one of the things that I've said before as we've gone through our study of the Book of Revelation is one of the ways that you can get to know the Lord Jesus Christ and His character better is by studying the various names and titles that are given to him in the word of God, because each one of those names and each one of those titles reveals a little bit more about his character and his person. Well, this is also true of Satan. You, it would, you would do well to take the titles that are given to Satan, the names that are given to Satan in the word of God, and study them, because as you do that, you understand better about who Satan is, about how he operates, and about what he desires to do. You learn more about his character. Notice here in this passage, for example, um, these names reveal all that we need to know about the character of the devil. As a dragon, Satan is looking for those whom he may devour. Remember what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So as a dragon, he is seeking whom he may devour. As a serpent, he is seeking those whom he may deceive. And uh, you know that he is going about in this world and that he is seeking to deceive people. Friends, the devil is a liar. Do not listen to him. Do not listen to what he has to say. As the devil, he is the false accuser, always looking for someone to defame, always looking for someone to put down. And he is a master at doing that in the hearts and lives of people. And he'll even try to put... Uh, among the saints of God, he'll try to put other saints of God down, and sometimes he will even use the people of God to do that. As Satan, the adversary, he is always looking for someone to defeat. 
And friends, that tells you a lot about who Satan is and about what he desires to do and what a blessing it is to get into these verses in Revelation chapter 20 and verses 1 and 2 and find out that one day that his day is coming. One day he is going to get what is coming to him. You know, from all appearances, it seems that the devil is winning the war between good and evil. But as you probably heard people say, appearances can be deceiving. It may seem like Satan is coming out on top, but friends, God will have the last word in this matter. Satan is powerful, but he isn't all powerful. Only God can claim that title. Then we see a heavenly incarceration in verse 3, where it says, And cast him out, and cast him into the bottomless pig, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. I mentioned this in a previous day's study, but I encourage you to read Revelation chapter 20, the first 10 verses, in particular, verses 2 through 7, and note the many times that the words thousand years uh, are used here to show us that this is talking about a literal thousand year period. So in verse 3, this angel removes the devil from the earth for 1,000 years. Can you imagine a world with no devil? There will be no one to tempt people to evil. No one will whisper lies into the ears of our minds. No one will remind us how wicked we were and how wicked we are. There will be no one to set traps for us to fall into. A world without the devil will be a wonderful place. Without the devil, peace, prosperity, joy, holiness, and blessing will be the order of the day. And while the earth will rejoice in his absence, the devil will be getting a little taste of what awaits him in eternity. The Bible tells us here in verse uh, 3 that he is cast into the bottomless pit. This seems to be the ancient prison where ancient demonic spirits are incarcerated by the Lord. You notice it in Jude chapter 1 and in verse 6 where it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So this uh, terminology here, the bottomless pit, is, sounds very similar to where the fallen angels are today who are waiting their final judgment. And we saw this abyss also open in Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. And when the pit was opened, terrible demons issued forth to torment men on the earth. And the Bible tells us in Revelation 20 and verse 3 that Satan will be confined to this prison for 1,000 years. Now, some may ask the question, if he's going to be there for a thousand years, what will Satan do for 1,000 years? Well, he will buy his time because he knows that he will be released for a short season, that he will be released for this final rebellion. Notice what it says in verse 3 of Revelation 20, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And we'll deal with that um, a little bit later. We'll talk about this releasing um, in our future studies of this particular chapter. But for now, we should rejoice in the truth that Satan will be bound one of these days. Hallelujah. You know, we'll be back in our, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be back here in your perfected body. And Satan will no longer have an impact upon you once again. But again, what a wonderful world this will be without the devil at work in this world. But friends, let me say this as we close. Child of God, you do not need to be overcome by the evil one. You do not need to be overcome by the devil. In your flesh, you cannot stand against him. But let me encourage you to live so close to God, live surrendered to him, that when Satan comes your way and seeks to tempt you, that you can have the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. When Satan seeks to hang around and, and to tantalize you and to torment you and to tempt you, let me encourage you, get in the word of God, whatever it is that he's tempting you in. Uh, read, quote back, what the Word of God has to say about that particular thing. He cannot stand against the Word of God. Look at how Jesus responded when he was tempted in Matthew 4. Three times he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He quoted the Word of God to him. If Satan doesn't seem to want to leave you alone, open up the Word of God and begin to read the Word of God aloud. 
plead the blood of Christ and the power of God, and he will flee. He will leave you. And friends, thank the Lord today that even though Satan is bound, that we can be victorious through our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a great day.